Monday Night Football during NFL Week 2 sucked. I'm not sure why it was decided to have two games going at the same time. Uh, That seemed stupid. Both games were ugly. It was a weird day. I mean, Buffalo in game number one beat Tennessee 41-7. to And the game was close for like a quarter. And then (laughs) the Bills went off. Josh Allen had four touchdowns. Uh, The craziest stat from this game, by the way, was that Stephon Diggs, Bills receiver, had 12 catches for 148 yards and three touchdown catches. And in contrast, the entire Tennessee Titans team, as a receiving core, the entire receiving core, had 12 catches for 123 yards and no touchdowns. Stephon Diggs had more touchdowns, more yards, and the same amount of catches as the entire Tennessee Titans roster did receiving. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, this game was a beatdown. Ryan Tannehill, the Titans quarterback, had two interceptions. Uh, I turned this game off in the third quarter when his second interception went for a pick six, giving Buffalo a 41-7 lead. I- apparently, rookie quarterback Malik Willis did come into the game after that point. I didn't watch it. He went one for four passing uh, for six yards. Eh, like, great. He made his NFL debut in the regular season in garbage time. I, I would love to see Malik Willis play someday. Uh, but not not in that moment. And even if he, if he'd actually done something noteworthy, he had like he ran for like 16 yards. I guess I don't know. I just I don't have any interest in watching that kind of game. It was frustrating that I don't know why we needed two Monday night football games, but this was an ugly ugly beatdown. Now game number two is Minnesota at Philly. I was genuinely really excited for this game. I thought, hey, Minnesota's got this new head coach Kevin O'Connell. Things are different this year. I expected a fun offensive battle. And I want to tell a story. One time I was camping with my friends. We were all drinking soda around the campfire. And my best friend's cousin likes to chew tobacco. He was spitting into an empty soda can. And his soda can was right next to my soda can. Mine was almost empty. And I went to take my last drink. I really threw the drink back and tilted my head back. And um, I was expecting sweet carbonated soda. Instead, what I got was warm tobacco and spit. It was a horrible, horrible experience. This game was kind of like that. I expected a fun offensive battle. And instead what I got was Philadelphia winning 24 to seven. Philly was awesome. Credit to Philadelphia. They played great. Minnesota's offense was really, really disappointing. Kirk Cousins, their quarterback at three interceptions. Um, I got to give credit to Philadelphia's defense. They actually were outstanding. Minnesota could not win one-on-one matchups at all, all night long. And by the way, Justin Jefferson, Minnesota's number one receiver, who some people regard as maybe the best receiver in the entire NFL, he had an awful, awful day. He was targeted 12 times. He only had six catches for 48 yards. And uh, two of Kirk Cousins' interceptions came when he was targeting Justin Jefferson. Interception number one was on a post route where, for some reason, Justin Jefferson ran behind Eagles corner Darius Slay. He kind of hung Kirk out to dry. He ran behind the defender and kind of stopped his route. Kirk was expecting him to win inside. Gave Darius Slay a really easy interception in the end zone. The second interception was on Kirk. Uh, Kirk Cousins had a defender in the flat route. Just kind of sitting there waiting for him to throw the football. I don't know what he saw. He threw it and got picked off. That was a bad decision. That one's on Kirk. But interception number three is another one where he was targeting Justin Jefferson. This time throwing a fade route. And it got picked off by Darius Slay. Dude, Darius Slay made two interceptions, had an incredible day, just beating Justin Jefferson one-on-one over and over and over again. And I would even go as far to say that Darius Slay shut down Justin Jefferson. And I want to say this. I don't want to hear or see Justin Jefferson talking crap for a while. Like, sit down and shut up. I keep seeing videos of him talking about how, you know, he's still, you know... Jamar Chase stole a bunch of my moves and I'm the best in the league and this and that. And it's a whole lot of garbage. You can't talk all that mess and then play that bad on Monday Night Football. Just not acceptable. Can't do that. You got shut down by Darius Slay. Justin Jefferson, no more talking smack for a while. I'm burned out on it. You can't talk smack and then play that bad on Monday Night Football. By the way, after this game, Kirk Cousins is now 2-10. and In his career on Monday Night Football, two wins, 10 losses, which is hilariously terrible. And people get mad at me when I say that, you know, Kirk Cousins doesn't handle big moments very well. I think at this point, the record speaks for itself. He's one in three in the playoffs. He's two in 10 on Monday Night Football. 
10 and 18 in primetime games. And right now, Kirk Cousins, if he finishes his current contract, which goes through 2023, he will have made $231.6 million during his NFL career. All while he is right now 60, 60, and 2 as a starting quarterback in the NFL. I, I just, the narrative from Kirk is not being changed at all. I was hoping that Kirk was going to change the narrative that he's kind of a mediocre quarterback and struggles in big moments. We're only two games in. We'll see how the rest of the year goes. But um, right now, the, the Monday Night Football struggles continue. And putting up a three-interception game with the world watching, you know, at least all of America watching, that's a really, really bad look for Kirk Cousins, who I'm hoping this year can change the narrative that he cannot handle big moments.